Good morning, everyone. My name is Noriko Sugimori from Kanamazu College in Michigan. Uh, I'd, like to talk in, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, my, project on, uh, my project on oral histories. How I got involved and challenges I have faced in maintaining, growing, and bringing audiences to digital oral history archive. When I, when I begin to talk about something new, I will show you a slide with blue. So whenever you see blue, think that uh, I, will keep, I will begin to talk something different. First, I'd like to talk about characteristic of my project. Uh, as Vicky had explained, uh, this project has stemmed from my social linguistics dissertation uh, I completed at Boston University. I studied how, how language changed from, uh, from the beginning of the daily newspaper, which, is, which was 1872 to the present, by tracking the change in the use of analytic for the emperor in uh, daily newspapers. Uh, at Asahi and uh, Tokyo Michinichi and found, as you can easily imagine, drastic decline in the aftermath of World War II. This simplification in the use of imperial analytics is considered to be the, one of the most important change in language use in the Japanese language. And as a social linguistic student, I wanted to explore how that, uh, well, how and what was the reason behind the change. Furthermore, one of my uh, dissertation, uh, dissertation uh, contained a chapter which, uh, in which I in inter interviewed people who were born in 1934 or earlier about their shifting language ideologies. I went to Tokyo, uh, where national newspapers tend to be, to, tend to be led and I went to Toyama, where the use of analytics tend to be the highest in Japan, and also also to Okinawa, uh, which contains uh, which use the newspapers, which has uh, least amount of analytics, and found interesting result. And but whenever I interviewed people, they digress to talk about their own war memories, which I found fascinating, and I really wanted to preserve their memories to the posterity in some way. And, uh, but I didn't have the equipment with me, but after coming to Kalamazoo College, uh, uh, I received the training in video, uh, videotaping, and uh, my, pro my project expanded. And my interviewees lived uh, somewhere in Japanese empire during World War II and spoke Japanese at that time, which means that somebody was born in Taiwan or somebody who lived in uh, Korea and or somebody who are now living in the United States. But they were in the, somewhere in the Japanese empire who spoke and spoke Japanese. And undergraduate students are involved in all the processes. That's one of my characteristics because Kalamazoo College I work with, uh, I work at, is a, a small liberal art colleges, undergraduate institution. And obviously World War II survivors will not live much longer, so it's now or never. So it's, I think it is very important to uh, interview now. And uh, I forgot something very important in uh, writing about the characteristic of my project. This project is the first, uh, first project uh, using newly released uh, oral history metadata synchronizers, bilingual version. Uh, this, this one is the first project in the world. I'm not talking about first in Japan, in, in Japanese. In all um, uh, multilingual, uh, multilingual projects, this became the first, and I will talk about how I, able to, I was able to do it in the session in the afternoon. How I got involved. As I said before, uh, the social linguistic dissertation was the starting point, and Great Lakes College Association, or GLCA's expanding collaboration initiative began in 2011. Uh, GLCA is, has uh, 13 members of small liberal art colleges in uh, Great Lakes region, and although we are separate, but 
they, uh, this organization helped me connect, connect with like-minded uh, co colleagues in other institutions and within the institution. Uh, in my case, oral history. And uh, they also held a tw uh, in 2014 Digital Liberal Arts Conference in Anawa, Michigan, and our collaboration began. Unfortunately, uh, 2016 uh, Andrew Mellon Foundation three-year grant was awarded to our project. And I'm not talking about, uh, uh, my, not my, not, my project is one of the big projects uh, involving 11 faculty members in the uh, GLCA group uh, about uh, oral history and digital storytelling, and which I will talk about more in, de in depth in the afternoon. In my talk, I'd like to focus on the third of these challenges I have faced in maintaining, growing, and bringing audiences to the archives. Uh, we are very fortunate uh, to receive funding from uh, Melon Foundation, and therefore I want to focus on how I, I made efforts to bring an audience to the archives, but it's it, it not easy, but I'm trying. What will make people feel like watching oral history archives? What, is, what will prevent it? What kind of people will watch oral history archives? If the contents are more user-friendly, and then people may feel like watching the project more. Therefore, the developer of OMS or Oral History Metadata Synchronizer, Doug, Douglas Boyd, created this technology. Because OMS displays table of contents called index, viewers can jump to watch the exact segment they want to watch, and uh, words published online, uh, but all words published online can be attacked. Such attacks happen when certain words are taken out of the context. Therefore, making an edited version survive on the, survive on the internet, we can counterattack such criticism. This is, a con this is everything. Uh, this is a context. And oral history metadata synchronizer can be of help. And in the afternoon session, I will, take, I will talk, uh, talk about OMS in, the, in depth. <coughs> Such attacks, attacks is not the only fear. Before discussing how to maintain and grow the archives, I know that some people may be hesitating, uh, hesitate, uh, may, may hesitate to begin oral history project because of many kinds of fears, such as, am I doing this right? Is it correct? Or maybe something is wrong? prevent people from working on oral history project. Just thinking of the process of time consuming, uh, time consuming uh, process may uh, be daunting. And uh, I also think that uh, if uh, we can increase, uh, to think of the increase of the viewers, if I spread the word about the archives, archive, we can bring more people. And maybe people who use this archive is that, uh, as uh, Dr. Morimoto mentioned, that people who study uh, this. So in my case, I, I, in, uh, I imagine two kinds of uh, students. Students who are learning Japanese language and students who are studying modern Japanese history. And uh, first, I'd like to talk about uh, how to improve archives content and as I mentioned, various kinds of fears uh, prevent us from doing it. IRB, Institutional Review Board, which is frustrating and time consuming. And after IRB is passed, we have to prepare for consent form. But that's not the end of the story. Even if uh, interviewees are uh, uh, agreed to be interviewed, then we have to uh, prepare for release forms. These three processes uh, have, have been daunting to many people. However, the situation may change. Oral history in academia situation will change uh, that because new law rule will be uh, active. The new rule exempts oral history from institutional review board oversight. 
This rule will go into effect January 19, 2018. And uh, I, I, uh, before coming here, I tried to find out to what extent this rule uh, applies, but as far as I understand, this is applicable to the United States, not in Canada, unfortunately. <laughs> and to help people who are interested in oral history project and OMS, uh, may uh, watch our videos. And uh, uh, we, we, have, uh, we have a <clears throat> website, Oral Info. Oral History is a liberal arts info. And we have created uh, online resource hubs. By, uh, this is like a NCC website and which contains many, uh, info, much information. So by going this there, we can find something new. So that, that kind of thinking, we have added many materials. And I hope this will increase our viewers. To spread the words about archive, this is very important. And I thought of linking uh, our videos with Wikipedia. Wikipedia has world's six largest, highest views. Most Wikipedia writers are young white males, so let's change this picture. <laughs> Wikipedia <laughs> entries in Japanese can be used as Japanese language teaching materials. This is something I, uh, I uh, encourage students to work on and uh, to do this. However, I encounter difficulties. Uh, because there are 11 members uh, projects are there, and my oral website writes, 2,070 copyrights remained with individual researchers per their release forms. And uh, to teach, uh, to incorporate Wikipedia component into our teaching, Wikipedia Foundation helps us. And actually, uh, in addition to Japanese, uh, intermediate and advanced Japanese language, I am teaching uh, other content courses such as language in uh, social linguistics course, Japanese language in society, and uh, manga, anime, and gender in modern Japan to, uh, to help uh, to responding to students' interest. And in my manga, anime, and gender in modern Japan class, I ask students to revise existing Wikipedia entries or write new new entries, new articles. And we have been successful. With this certain background, I wanted to do this for this project. So for example, uh, for example, if I can link a video of oral history of Kobe Air Raid with Kobe Air Raid Wikipedia page, one can make the videos more visible and with this idea in mind, I have hoped to link these videos. However, uh, Wikipedia Foundation, uh, for Wikipedia Foundation, this idea was too new. And uh, some of them said yes, said yes, and the other people said that uh, Wikipedia doesn't accept pro proprietary formats, only open source ones, so you cannot do it. And I, I'm still exploring how to do it. And so far, among the 11 members, I'm the only one thinking of a linking with Wikipedia, so we have to discuss how to do this, do with this problem. And the next question is uh, about in, uh, education. And for modern history class, uh, my student's translation was already used in Albion College, which is another uh, GLC college, the modern Japanese history class. And after being used, uh, after my student's translation, English translation used, we held a forum to explore the meaning of learning foreign war memories in the 21st century Michigan. We, uh, we are, uh, uh, Michigan is big. Michigan is as large as the size of Honshu. So we met at the, our midway point, Battle Creek, and reserving an entire sushi restaurant and we discussed and it was a sheer success. And the students really uh, are interested in learning more about war memories. And as for Japanese uh, application to Japanese language learning, Princeton University Japanese Language Pedagogy Forum will be held on March, uh, May 14th, and I'm scheduled to speak more about uh, uh, application to pedagogy there in the morning session. And proceedings will be published online. 
you are librarians are more may not be interested in uh, pedagogy. However, if you know instructor of Japanese who might be interested, please tell them to come to Princeton on May the 14th. And which words should we use is another problem. And I have been exploring how I can find Japanese equivalent of Library of Congress subject headings. Nagasaki Sensei uh, kindly added me to the Facebook of Digital Humanities and I asked questions. And I don't have a luxury of working with Japanese speaking librarian like many of your institutions, faculty members. Therefore, I, whenever I have a problem, I tend to ask uh, professor, uh, uh, University of Michigan's librarian, Yoko Takayata-san. And, uh, and I found out there are two uh, equivalent, similar kind of, uh, uh, two Japanese equivalent, and probably I should use uh, that uh, National Diet Library's version, but I don't know how to do it. Therefore, I went to Kokuritsu Kokugo Kenkyujo, National Institute for Japanese Language and Linguistics, and uh, asked the researchers, uh, shared my program with the researchers there, and they said that uh, you can use whatever language you want to use. As far as you don't say, this is the standard. So I, that's the easiest solution, so I, I probably use, use that op option. And uh, in the English, uh, in the OMS, uh, binding, uh, I'm talking about OMS bilingual version, but monolingual version was much more commonly used. And in their monolingual English version, when we, end, when we look at the field in the index, because OMS was created by the gen, uh, funding, from, uh, funding, from, uh, funding from Library of Congress, Library of Congress subject heading auto populate and it, uh, we pick up World War II or other words which are relevant and easily used. But such a thing has not been uh, done in the bilingual version, but it will be uh, developed in the future. Because I, I teach Japanese and the students are from various parts of the world, language used, how to tr translate language becomes a problem and we discuss a lot for example, one, one of the problem, uh, recent problem was the use of uh, translation in Korean War. And Chosen Senso was the first word that occurred to me, but my uh, students from South Korea uh, are against the idea saying that Kanko Senso should be the word to be used. And then we discussed, uh, yes, uh, in Vietnam, people don't call Vietnam War, they call it American War in Vietnam. So that kind of, by relativizing it, the situation, I will continue to learn about more about the uh, history. And how, to, how uh, we can include the people is another problem. And this is from the, my recent trip, uh, recent uh, interview. And this is my student, Min Su Kim. And uh, this is me, and this is, uh, in old school uh, harmony, uh, who lives in the sh house of sharing in Koshu, South Korea. Uh, ten, ten comfort women live in house of sharing in Koshu, and uh, uh, she is one of them. And in the email communications, I heard that she, uh, she is the only one who can speak uh, Japanese. And I, we went there, and I don't know anything about Korean, so my student help was crucial. And, but uh, her, and her hobby is studying Japanese conversation in the publication. However, her Japanese was not high enough to be interviewed. And, but she stressed that she had spoken Japanese during the war because without doing it, she, she had been uh, hit, hit by Japanese. <laughs> and uh, as of December 2016, average, average age of comfort women at House of Sharing is already 91. And, but this, uh, I was, I'm not sure this Korean-speaking uh, Korean uh, interview can be in, in, uh, included in my uh, collection or not. So I have to continue to think on what to do, and then I procrastinate. procrastinate. Uh, this is what I have been done. Thank you very much. My sincere thank you goes to uh, Brooke Bryan, who is a leader of one of the co-leader co of the project, and Liz Smith, Josh Moon from Kalamazoo College Library, Denise Wyatt, 
uh, from uh, for helping me with English, Keiko Yokotakata and the uh, uh, University of Michigan Center for Japanese Studies for providing inf uh, precious information to peop uh, people who want to study about Japanese but don't have ac ac access. And uh, Caroline Topa, Min Su Kim, Alex Fairfall, Ang 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 Jay Yuk, Yang Su, uh, Yang Hun Kim, uh, my student, Amy Newde, have also helped me. GLCSC, NCC, and Mellon Foundation. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.